The Pixel 6 Pro and the Pixel 6 are official and I've got them in my hands here. And we're gonna do an unboxing video to see what you actually get in the box and run through some of the tech specifications and see what they are all about and what makes them different uh, to each other. I understand this is just an unboxing video and a first look, so this is not gonna give you a rundown of the software features or review or anything like that, or even camera samples. So I understand if this, not, if this is not a video for you and if you wanna wait for the review, that's totally fine. But in the meantime, if this is your first time around here, please do subscribe, smash the like button and uh, hit the bell notification so you get notified when the review's up. Let's crack on with it. Before we begin the unboxing, big shout out to Google for sending us the devices to review. Uh, it always helps in this kind of scenario. So starting with the boxes, the boxes are quite identical in terms of the design and the way they look. And on the front of both devices, you get Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. So immediately you know what's what. On the back of the box, it tells you what colors you've got. So you have the Pixel 6 in stormy black and also the Pixel 6 Pro in cloudy white. Uh, so both come in 128 gigabytes of storage that we've got here, but you can also get them in larger storage sizes as well. There's no micro SD card expansion slot. Opening the box, you get the devices in there, obviously, and you get the Google 6, as you can see here, in that stormy black, and then Pixel 6 Pro in cloudy white. Next, you get a USB-C cable to charge your device and also for data transfer, and there's also a full USB to USB-C transfer adapter, uh, which I usually use to transfer from one device to another. So if you're coming from an iPhone, for example, this could be a really good, uh, useful tool to transfer data very quickly. You also get your user manual, quick start guide, and you get your warranty information and a SIM ejector tool. In terms of design straight away, you notice that the Pixel 6 has a flat front uh, screen and the Pixel 6 Pro has a curved edge uh, on either sides and on the back as well. But more on the specifications though. So on the Pixel 6, you're looking at a full screen 6.4 inch display with 20 by nine aspect ratio, and that's full HD plus at 411 PPI. On the Pixel 6 Pro, you're looking at a full screen, 6.7 inch display, and it's got 19.5 by nine aspect ratio, and you get a better display at Quad HD+, which gives you 512 PPI. Both will give you smooth display, so adaptive refresh. Uh, so on the Pixel 6, you're looking at up to 90 hertz, and on the Pixel 6 Pro, you're looking at up to 120 hertz. So you use this LTPO screen technology, so it can go all the way down to 10 hertz to save energy and not just use your processor for no reason, for example. Both are covered in Corning Gorilla Glass Victor's cover glass, so it makes it nice and tough. It's a lot, a lot tougher than the previous uh, generation. There's actually a video that I made on this particular model, so do check out, check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description area. Both are capable of always on display at a glance, and you also have that usual now playing that we're used to on Google Pixel devices. They have HDR supports and full 24-bit depth color of uh, 16 million colors. So they look very vibrant and look really nice as well. Obviously the Pixel 6 is slightly smaller in every way, so in height as well and weight. Uh, so it's smaller compared to the Pixel 6 Pro. So if that's something that matters to you, you should check that out and uh, actually com you should consider which one to actually go for. Google are saying both will up offer you up to 48 hours of battery life on extreme battery saver, but on a regular user, you can at 24 hour battery life because it has adaptive uh, sort of control over this. So it can learn with this new processor, which I'll talk more about further down the line. It's got a new processor chip in there that can learn about your usage throughout the day. So that way it learns about what you do, what apps needs uh, the processing power most and the power in there in, in general. So it doesn't burn your battery life. You have a minimum of 4,524 million power battery on the Pixel 6 and on the Pro you're looking at 4,905 million power battery. So far so good on the battery life in terms of all day use, I've, I've had no issues with it at all. It's really good. You also have fast charging support. So on the Pixel 6 Pro you're looking at up to 50% charge in 30 minutes uh, with Google 30 watt USB-C charger. So this is sold separately as well so you don't get the, uh, the brick in the box. On the Pixel 6, the standard one, you also have Google 30 watts USB-C charger and uh, this would work with uh, USB PD 3.0, which is again sold separately. They are Qi certified, so you can have fast uh, wireless charging and you've got a battery share as well. Again, stuff that we're now used to seeing on Pixel devices and just Android devices in general, especially when they're flagships. In terms of RAM, you're looking at eight gigabytes LP DDR5 RAM on the Pixel 6. And on the Pixel 6 Pro, you're looking at 12 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM. So just using it generally, it, it feels very fluid, very fast, loading applications in and out. It just, it's just so sharp and just on point. There's no issues there at all. Like I said on storage, both devices that I have here are 120, 128 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage, uh, which is available for all the colors. Uh, but you also get the option for 256 gigabytes of storage in the stormy black and sort of sea foam, uh, sea foam only versions on both uh, 6 and the 6 Pro. So if that's what you're after, then uh, that's 
the colors that you'd be, you'd be able to get. Sorry, on the 6 Pro, the 256 gig is only available on the Stormy Black. So do keep that in mind. In terms of processing power, this is something that's very important to Google right now. This is the first time Google are making their own processor and they both have that Google set Tensor uh, sensors in there. So, so far so good. It feels very fluid, taking pictures, playing games, just general usage of the device just feels very fluid, very smooth on both devices. So there's no complaint there at all. And you also get that Titan M2 security co-processor in there. Again, if security is something that you're worried about or you're concerned about, you are rest assured that you have the best security chip available on your smartphone. Moving on to the camera. So on the Pixel 6, the standard version, you're looking at a 50 megapixel Octa PD quad Bayer wide camera. So that gives you 1.2 micron pixel width and that's f 1.85 aperture with 82 degrees field of view on the standard uh, lens. You have a super resolution zoom of up to seven times. And then there's also a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, which is f 2.2 aperture with 114 degrees of field of view. And it's also got lens correction. You have laser detect autofocus sensor in there and optical and electronic image stabilization, which is cool. It also has spe spectral and flicker sensor. So you know, those photos that has flickers and when you're taking videos, for example, that would be reduced and your fast camera launcher available for you there. On the Pixel 6 Pro, you have 50 megapixel Octa PD quad bear wide camera. So that's the main camera at f 1.85 aperture. Again, it's 1.2 microns in terms of pixel width. And this will give you the same uh, field of view at 82 degrees. In terms of uh, the next one, the ultra wide angle lens, you have 12 megapixel f2.2 aperture. So again, very similar to the other one with 114 degrees field of view with lens correction. And you have a 48 megapixel telephoto lens at f3.5 aperture. So this will give you four times optical zoom. Again, that super res is there with telephoto up to 20 times. And you get laser auto detect, uh, autofocus sensor, spectra and flicker sensor. And you also have optical and electronic image stabilization on wide and telephoto lenses and fast camera launcher. You can also shoot raw fo uh, photos as well. So you can store them in DNG format, which you can then go back and do some post-processing if you wish to do so. On the front facing camera on the 6, you have 8 megapixel with f2.0 aperture, fixed focus. This will give you 84 degrees wide field of view. And on the 6 Pro, you're looking at 11.1 .1 megapixel with f2.2 aperture and 94 degrees ultra wide field of view with fixed focus as well. You can also shoot uh, raw images uh, on this one if you wish to do so with a front facing camera. And you've got a bunch of camera features uh, which we can't go through just yet, but when we did a review, we'll be able to go through some of those. But you get your usual stuff like your uh, night sight, things like portrait mode, shoot your videos in 4K up to 60 frames per second. And uh, there are also other features which they announced things like magic eraser, uh, face on blur, and motion mode, so when you're shooting photos, you don't have to then, uh, you can pan, sorry, and get that nice blurry uh, background whilst keeping the subject nice and sharp in focus. More on videography, on the six, you get 4K video recording at 30 frames per seconds and 60 frames, and you can also do 1080p video recording at up to 60 frames per seconds. That's also similar to that of the six Pro. On the front, on the six can only do 1080p at 30 frames per seconds. On the six Pro, you can do 4K at up to 30 frames per seconds and 1080 at up to 60 frames per second. For getting into your device and security, you have fingerprint unlock and uh, there's no face unlock, unfortunately, on both devices, which is quite disappointing. But what I've noticed so far, so in my first impression, just using it, the fingerprint unlock can be slow uh, to get into the device and you have to kind of press slightly on the screen to get into the device. But other than that, it works when it works and uh, it works all the time, actually. I take that back. It works all the time. It's just that sometimes it's quite slow. Uh, so you might end up just using your you know, your key key code entry. Around the devices on the right side, you get your power button and volume rocker uh, on the right side. And down at the bottom, you get your speaker and also your USB-C port. And on the left side is where you'd find your SIM card tray. So, and up top, you get a microphone port that's there as well. And the camera sort of uh, array kind of sticks out, but I kind of like the design. I like the way the camera uh, uh, bay just sticks out a little bit. It just gives it a distinctive look and it's just nice and different and I like it. Both are 5G devices. You're looking at sub six uh, gigahertz. So if that's something that really matters to you, there you have it. You can have 5G sub-6 bands. For durability, so besides that Corning Gorilla Glass Victors, uh, you also have IP68 dust and water resistance on both devices. And you've got fingerprint resistant coating as well on the glass. So although it's very fingerprint magnet, it's still kind of secure and safe. I've been using it so far, just chucking it in my bag, chucking it in my back pocket and stuff. And I've not seen any cracks or scratches so far. So that's really good. You do get two years warranty as well on both devices. So that's reassuring. But overall first impression is that this device is a very fluid, they're very fast. It feels super, super slick as well. I like the design. I like what they've done here. This is probably the first time I can comfortably recommend 
Google Pixel devices in a while uh, because they actually look good as well and they feel premium. Uh, camera looks good so far, although I can't really show you too many samples right now. I'll be able to show you that in my final review, but they look great so far. I'm, I'm happy with them. And videos is actually looking good as well good dynamic range and all that kind of stuff. But we'll talk again, we'll talk more about that when we release the full review uh, for the two devices. So that's it for the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro. Great devices, I love the design, they feel very nice in hand, very premium. I quite like the design, uh, the camera's great as well so far from using it out and about. Make sure you follow me on Twitter to see some samples there. Uh, but yes, in the meantime, if this is your first time around here, as always, please do subscribe, smash the like button and the bell notification as well. That really does help me out. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if there's anything you wanna see in terms of video content on this, in terms of review, do let me know in there as well. Make sure you follow me on Gadgets Boy and Twitter as well, at Gadgets Boy, because I'll be sharing samples on there and any little complaints or good things about the devices, I'll be sharing it on those platforms as well. So do check them out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.